Today, the city is helping us fit test our providers on N95 masks, which are the minimum um, uh, level of masks that are considered to be uh, protective against the coronavirus. Because we require uh, the frontline or first responders and frontline workers who work with patients to wear our respirator, we're required to have a written respiratory protection program, which we have. We're required to train those affected individuals, and then we're required to fit test them as well. The reason we make sure they're fit tested is to make sure that they wear the mask properly and it protects them properly. There are two different types of fit tests. There's a quantitative, which uses a computer system called a, a, a quantitative fit tester. We use a port account device. It actually hooks up to the mask and it runs through a computer uh, and tests them uh, objectively. Another version that we're using in the field is called subjective or a qualitative fit testing. The testers are blowing a special mist into these hoods that, the, that our members are wearing and the mist is uh, something that they can easily taste and smell. If they taste and smell it, even though they're wearing the mask, then we know that the mask hasn't, isn't fitting right. Uh, if they go through, through the whole process and they're unable to sense the mist, then we know that the coronavirus wouldn't be able to get in either. We've been visiting uh, some of the offices or precincts and stations of our EMS providers and police uh, officers. We're working with the uh, fire department as well. We've got almost 1,500 plus people we have to capture in two or three weeks. We're in a unique position because it's not always feasible to wear it all the time for us, uh, but we do want to have it with us and be able to put it on in a moment's notice. It's, it's something that we have with us, it's something that's expected to be used under certain conditions, and we want to make sure it's effective, it's safe, and we're doing the best we can for everybody. It's comforting that uh, we know that we have equipment that will actually protect us and we know what equipment to use. We're very concerned about this disease and we're concerned about the effect that it could have on our providers. And we're concerned that when our providers get sick that it diminishes our capacity to respond to members of the community who are sick. It's important that all these branches, all the fire, police, EMS, have the opportunity to be there, be present, and provide the services needed, but at the same time protect themselves and protect the public.